Yeah. yeah. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Well, you can see these pictures. It's obviously uh, something devastating has happened. And again, unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject as it becomes available to you. Right now, we've got Sean Murtaugh. He is a CNN producer on the telephone right now. Sean, what can you tell us about what you know? This is uh, Sean Murtaugh. I just was uh, standing on the uh, uh, vice president of finance. Sean, Vice President of Finance for CNN. Sean, we're on the air right now. What, what can you tell us about this situation? Hello? Yes, yeah, Sean, you're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead. What can you tell us? I, I just witnessed a plane that appeared to be cruising uh, slightly lower than normal at altitude over New York City, and it appears to have crashed into, uh, I don't know which tower it is, but it hit directly in the middle of uh, one of the World Trade Center towers. Sean, what kind of plane? Was it a small plane, a, a jet? It was a, uh, it was a jet. It uh, looked like a two-engine jet, um, maybe a 737. You're talking about a large passenger commercial large jet. large passenger commercial jet. And where were you when you saw this? I am on the 21st floor of Five Penn Plaza. Did it appear that the plane was having any difficulty flying? Yes, it did. It was teetering uh, back and forth, wingtip to wingtip. And it looks like it has crashed into probably 20 stories from the top of the World Trade Center, maybe the 80th to 85th floor. There is smoke billowing out of the uh, World Trade Center. Sean, what happened next? Does it, does it appear to you that the plane is still inside the World Trade Center? From my angle, I'm, I'm viewing south towards the Statue of Liberty and towards the World Trade Center. It looks like it has is embedded in the, in the building. I can't see from my my vantage point, whether it has come out the other side. Sean, what about uh, on the ground? or any debris that has hit down there? Can my, you see my vantage anything? point is too far from the World Trade Center to right. make any uh, determination of that. Did you see any smoke, any flames coming out of the engines of that plane? No, I did not. The, the plane just uh, was, was uh, coming in low, and the t wingtips tilted back and forth, and then it, it flattened out. It looks like it's uh, hit at a slight angle into the World Trade Center. I can see I can see flames now coming out the side of the building and smoke continues to billow. Well, generally, is that a traffic area in New York for, for aircraft? It is not a normal uh, uh, flight pattern. I'm a frequent fl uh, traveler between Atlanta and New York for business and it is not a normal flight pattern to come directly over Manhattan. Usually they come up either over the, the Hudson River heading north and, and pass alongside the island of Manhattan or if they're taking off from LaGuardia, they usually take off uh, over Shea Stadium and, 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 and take a, gain altitude around the island of Manhattan. It's rare that you have a jet crossing directly over um, the island of Manhattan. Just for our viewers who are be just tuning in right now, you're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center Tower where, according to eyewitness Sean Murtaugh, he is a vice president of finance, an eyewitness to what he describes as a twin-engine plane or possibly a 737 passenger jet flying into the World Trade Center. It appears to be still embedded inside the building. Sean, are you in a position right now to hear whether any sirens are going, any ambulances, any sort of response to this yet? Uh, not, not from my vantage point. I'm probably a mile and a half, two miles from the World Trade Center. It, it is a, a remarkable scene as we're seeing right now. Flames still coming out of the windows, black smoke billowing from what appears to be all sides. Uh, obviously, uh, windows shattered and steel jutting out from the structure and right Sean, now. And Sean, once again, we're looking at these pictures. And I you're see them in my us, office. I have yeah, them on all my TVs. And you're telling us you believe the plane is still remains uh, embedded. I, I can't tell from my vantage point. All right. Sean, thank you so much thank for your you eyewitness much. account there. Right now, we want to go to our affiliate NYW reporting on this as we speak. There's a little girl in his arms. Did you see what happened, sir? Did you see what happened? What happened? Well, I was in the path train and there was a huge explosion sound. Everyone came out. A large section of the building is blown out around like the 80th floor. Did, was it hit by something or was it something it was inside? inside? It, it was, was inside. inside. Because it looked out, everything was coming out. 
Everything all the windows coming. were coming out, all the papers were What is on out. the sidewalk? I didn't see anything. Were I there ran. any people hurt, do you know? Um, I just ran, and everyone in the past train just ran. I don't know if anyone was hurt, but I assume they were because the windows were all blown out. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ollie, you would have to assume uh, a very, very terrible situation if that indeed is the case, mm -hmm. because I'm sure uh, there were people there were people up there in that uh, there were people up there in that uh, World Trade Center. Now we have lost again. Our transmitter is on top of the World Trade Center, so we apparently uh, have consequently lost contact with Dick Oliver. But we are on the on the phone with an eyewitness. Uh, Rosa, can you hear me? Is Rosa there? Hello. Rosa. Yes. Uh, this is Jim Ryan here in the studio. Hi. Uh, what is your last name, please? Cardona Rivera. All right. Again, uh, you are looking at pictures now. We uh, understand from a CNN vice president, Sean Murtaugh, who was an eyewitness to this. We believe a commercial jet has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center, and you can see the smoke billowing out there, are flames billowing out there, and uh, a commercial jet crashing into one of these towers. At this point, we do not have official injury uh, updates to bring you. But we are only uh, now beginning to put the, together the pieces of this uh, horrible incident. Right, just a few seconds ago, we were tuning in to uh, one of our affiliates in New York, uh, WNYW. Right now, we want to go to an eyewitness on the telephone right now, Jean. What can you tell us about what you saw? Uh, I can tell you that I was watching TV and there was this uh, sonic boom and the TV went out and I thought maybe that the Concorde was back in service because uh, I've heard about those sonic booms and I got up to my window. I live in Battery Park City right next to the Twin Towers and I looked up and the side of the World Trade Center exploded right when I looked up and uh, at that point debris started falling I couldn't believe what I was watching can you hear anything from your position right now ambulances sirens absolutely positively there are crowds of people downstairs in Battery Park City everybody's come out from the buildings this is the financial area in Wall you know in uh, Manhattan and there's a lot of fire engines uh, I can see them from my window Jean can you tell us uh, I don't know if you can tell which tower it is uh, that's on fire right now or, or the kinds of services that are inside that tower I can't tell what's inside. Uh, it's the northern tower uh, versus the southern tower, and it seems to be on all sides of the building, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, the uh, west side, the south side, and it looks like smoke's coming from the east side as well. Gene, can you see any of the debris currently on the ground area? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it's continuing to kind of flutter down like leaflets. And uh, at first, there was just tons of debris, and it continues to fall out. and. Uh, it looks like these uppermost floors uh, are definitely on fire. Mm. Can you see any actual uh, people in that area who may have, been, uh, may have been hit by any of this debris or were not able to get out of the way? Can you see any crowds that may be too close to where they should be? Anything like that? No, I don't think so. And uh, it's not a highly trafficked area mm -hmm. at the base of the World Trade Center. So that's one fortunate thing. Gene, right now we're continuing to look at uh, pictures of this devastating scene. According to Sean Murtaugh, Vice President of Finance, he witnessed what he described as a twin-engine plane, possibly a 737. He was almost absolutely sure that it was a large passenger jet that, that went into that plane. Gene, you're saying that you didn't see anything initially. You didn't see a plane actually approach the building. I had right? no idea it was a plane. I just, uh, I just saw the entire uh, top part of the World Trade center explode so you, uh, I turned on the TV when I heard they said it was a plane right. it was really strange right. were you there living in New York during the World Trade Center bombing no I wasn't fortunately so when you say a sonic boom did you actually feel anything were things shaking in your apartment uh, it, it, you know yeah you could feel it it was just a gigantic sonic boom the TV nearly it, it went off for a second and then it went back on and the windows you know, you felt the vibrations on the windows. You were saying it's not a high traffic area uh, usually, but c can you guesstimate uh, how many people may be in an area like that at, uh, at this, this hour of the morning? Uh, it would be hard to say. There, there is a huge courtyard between the two World Trade Center buildings, and the only issue might have been uh, tourists or business people out mm -hmm. in this courtyard area and they possibly would have been hit. But the people that are immediately around the base of the World Trade Center, I would say at any given time, you're talking about maybe 20 or 30 people at best 
Uh, we were talking with Sean Murtaugh earlier, and he said this is not normally an area where you would see some sort of aircraft, uh, certainly, obviously, that low. But in that, it, that is not a high traffic uh, area in terms of flights? Uh, I don't know about flights. You know, uh, I have a balcony down here in Battery Park City, and they have that needle sticking out of the top of the World Trade Center. And I've always wondered, you know, uh, if anyone would kind of get too close to the building, uh, you know, and... and accidentally bear into it. Gene, tell us a little bit about that area and how emergency crews would uh, be able to access that area. Would that be relatively uh, difficult or, or easy to access for emergency people? I would imagine it would be slightly difficult because uh, to get around the base of the World Trade Center building, there's really only the one street entrance. Uh, the other sides of the building are surrounded by other buildings in the courtyard and uh, so it's just this west side highway, this one major street that runs up the west side of Manhattan that makes it accessible for the fire engines. And, you know, it's amazing to sit here and watch this building on fire, and you've got this mm. tiny uh, little fire engine that I'm watching. That's all you yeah. see right now is the, the, the one well, fire engine? The, where the, uh, the fire engines are, it's a little bit obscured by other buildings. Right. Gene, let me ask you, I know I'm asking you to be a bit of an expert on the World Trade Center, but there's a famous viewing deck for uh, tourists mm -hmm. on one of the towers. When you say that this is uh, the North Tower, is this the one that services a lot of the tourists to get their view and get to the restaurant at the top? As a matter of fact, it is. And uh, there's a, as I'm sure you can see, uh, there's a ton of smoke coming out right now. Um, I'm just guessing the, uh, the fire seems to be worse on, uh, it, it looks like it's about... 15 floors down from the top of the building. Yeah, one of the eyewitnesses, one of our affiliates, uh, was talking to said that she thought that this was on the 80th floor. We know that there's an open air deck uh, 110 stories high, and mm -hmm. the uh, glass enclosed observatory is on the 107th floor. So there is the possibility that people may very well be trapped up there. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jean Yearman. You're very welcome. Eyewitness here to uh, a loud sonic boom she described as she was sitting inside her apartment and she looked up and saw the side of the World Trade Center exploded into flames and black smoke. We are going to join one of, another one of our New York affiliates, WABC, for their live coverage. Plane overhead, and then all of a sudden I, I thought it sounded kind of lo um, louder than I looked up, and all of a sudden it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. Um, big. Uh, big flash of flame, uh, fire coming out from all over. Then the, all the um, the bricks is a huge hole right now. Um, it almost looks like the plane probably went through. I'm not sure. Winston, can you see? Are you on the north side there, where the the plane made uh, contact? Yes, I am. Now, when you say a huge hole, uh, one of our earlier oh. witnesses, Libby Clark, said not much of the plane came down off the building. Much no, of it went, went right in. into the building. It's in the building, that, from what you can see. Right. Now, can yeah. you see if there's a lot of debris downstairs, Winston? Um, no, because it looked like it, it inverted. With the impact, everything went inside the building. Inside. Um, the only thing that came out was a little bit of the, um, the outside awning. But I'd say the huge, the hold is, let me just get a better look right now. Okay, go ahead. We'll the, um, I'd say the hold takes about, looks like six, seven floors were taken out. And there's more oh, explosions there's, oh, right now. Hold on, people are running. Winston, hold, on. hold on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. The building's exploding right now. you got people running up the street. Okay. Hold on, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, just uh, put, put Winston on pause there for just a moment. Okay, while the he... whole building just exploded some more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the street. Uh, am the... I still connected? Winston, this would support probably what Libby and you both said, that perhaps the fuselage was in the building that would cause a second explosion such as that. Well, that's what just happened then. That would that certainly... Yeah, people are running up. Um, I, we are getting word that perhaps... Okay, hold on. The, the people here are... Everybody's panicking. All right, well, Winston, you know, Winston, let me put Winston on hold for just a moment. Okay, I don't know don't, how much longer I'll be staying. I'm inside of a diner right now. Well, Winston, you know what? If you could give us a call back, I just don't want to panic here on the air. Let's just uh, take some of our pictures from News Chopper 7. Now, one of our producers said perhaps a second plane was involved, and let's not, let's not even speculate to that point, but at least put it out there that perhaps that may have happened. Uh, the second explosion would certainly back the theory from a couple of eyewitnesses that the plane fuselage perhaps stayed in those upper buildings. 
Now, if you look at the second building, there are two that both Twin Towers now are on fire. Now, this was not the case, am I correct? A couple of moments ago. This is the second Twin Tower now on fire. And we're going to check on the second flight if perhaps that had happened. This all began at about 8.48 this morning. Again, what we know in case you're just joining us, a small plane, not a Cessna type or five or six seater, but instead perhaps a passenger flight ran into the north side of the World Trade Center. As you can see, the, the second explosion that you're looking at now in the second Twin Tower it has spread much debris, much more debris than the first explosion or the first accident. Uh, if there is, if, is Winston still on the line with us? Okay, he's not there, but um, do we have, I'll just talk to my producer, do we have a, an eyewitness that perhaps sees better than we do from these pictures? Again, you can see that there is debris falling off. Come on, dip. Okay, we actually have an Eyewitness News reporter, Dr. Jay Adlersberg, who is downtown at the time, and he is on the phone with us live. Dr. Jay, what can you tell us? Hello, Steve. Um, I'm actually uptown at 86th and Riverside. I can see the World Trade Center from about half the building um, uh, up to the top. And about five minutes ago, as I was watching the smoke, um, a small plane, I... It looked like a propeller plane came in from the west and um, uh, about 20 or 25 stories below the top of the center it disappeared for a, a second and then exploded um, uh, behind a water tower so I couldn't tell whether it hit the building or not but it was very visible that a plane had come in uh, at a low altitude oh, okay. and appeared to crash into the uh, World Trade Center. Dr. J, we're going to take a look at videotape just moments ago of the second plane hitting the World Trade Center. That is spectacular pictures. I don't know if you, you could see the plane, and that too was a passenger plane. If perhaps some type of navigating system or some type of electronics would have put two planes into the World Trade Center within... It looks like about 18 minutes of each other. You want to go to... We have another copy. There is the second plane, another passenger plane hitting the World Trade Center. These pictures are frightening indeed. These are just minutes between each other. So naturally, you will guess and you will speculate and perhaps ask the question, if some type of navigating equipment is awry that two commuter planes would run into the World Trade Centers at the same time. Our director, you're speaking in my ear at this point. You are looking at live pictures right now of the World Trade Centers. Again, we now have two passenger planes within 18 minutes of each other smashing into the World Trade Centers. Dr. J, are you still with us on the phone? I'm still with you, Steve. Dr. J, this is just frightening pictures indeed, and, and I would assume, or you would naturally think that when they've been listening to some of the coverage states. provided for us by our affiliate WABC out of New York City, let's go now and check our other affiliate WNBC to get the latest, I'm sorry, WNYW, WNYW here, live coverage here of this amazing picture we're getting from Lower Manhattan, two planes, one hitting each of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center. They, they come by and they say, what happened, what happened? And you just got to say, something hit the building, and then something hit both buildings. Well, we, uh, we, we saw clearly, uh, we didn't see the first one, but we saw clearly mm. that a plane uh, deliberately crashed mm. into the, one of the upper floors of the World Trade Center. That was the second plane. So two planes mm. uh, crashed into the uh, upper floors of each of the World Trade Center towers. And I'm just, uh, I understand now that uh, Port Authority headquarters are in uh, one yeah. of those buildings somewhere mm -hmm. near that location. Uh, Jim, I, I yes. don't know whether we've confirmed that this was an aircraft or to be more specific. Some people said they thought they saw a missile. Well, I don't know how people could dis dis differentiate, but we might keep mm -hmm. open the possibility that this was a missile attack mm -hmm. uh, on these buildings. Uh, Ali, I must say that uh, we have an eyewitness who said it was a large plane that crashed first. And then uh -huh. as, as we were watching the live picture here in the studio, we saw a plane 
mm. crash into the crash into the other tower of the World Trade Center. And again, let's uh, just to be sure. Th there oh, it is. Oh. There it is. The plane mm. went right through mm. the other tower of the World Trade Center. That is a very hard thing to watch. And clearly, these are incredible pictures that we're watching this morning. These, thanks to our affiliate WNYW in New York. You are looking at this at this picture. It is the twin towers of the World Trade Center both of them being damaged by impacts from planes. We saw one happen at about maybe nine minutes before the top of the hour, and just moments ago, so maybe 18 minutes after the first uh, impact, the second tower was impacted with a, by another, what appeared to be another passenger plane. Uh, in fact, we've got some tape replay of that. Do we have the tape available right now? Here's the plate, here's the tape. You see the plane coming in from what looks like the east side, and it blows into the building with the flames and the smoke billowing out the other side of the tower. It's hard for me to tell exactly which is the north side and which is the south side, but it appears it's coming out of the north side there. Incredible pictures. These happened just moments ago. And I believe we have someone with us on the line. Ira Firmer. It's a, we have Ira Firmer, the former NTSB spokesman. And you're watching these pictures as well with us, are you not? Yeah, I'm with you on CNN. What, what can you make of what we have seen, and particularly with this replay we just saw moments ago? That's absolutely inexplicable. There, there shouldn't be any aircraft in that area, much less something heading what looked like deliberately for the World Trade Center Tower. You don't think there's any way this could be any kind of an accident, no kind of a navigational equipment failure or some sort of a, a navigational quirk by a beacons or whatever? No, you've got incredibly good visibility at this point, and no pilot is going to be relying on navigational equipment uh, in such a circumstance that would uh, cause them to crash into the World Trade Center. How far out of the way from an approach to either LaGuardia or Kennedy would a plane have to be to hit the World Trade Center? There are approaches that uh, come up uh, along the Hudson River, which is to the west of the World Trade Center, uh, and those aircraft usually wind up going into LaGuardia. So you can come within uh, a mile or two of the World Trade Center, but uh, it is such a visible object as you're approaching New York City that uh, it's just not possible for a pilot during the daytime uh, to have taken uh, a course that would put it right into the World Trade Center. A second occurrence uh, within a few minutes is beyond belief. And as you can see, there definitely is no weather problem, so uh, weather would be uh, definitely ruled out as a factor in this case. Yes, the course is a normal course. I mean, for commercial pilots coming into New York, it certainly appeared uh, from the video on CNN that uh, the uh, second aircraft was heading for the tower and uh, that it was a commercial-sized aircraft. Could you tell, have a better idea about what size that plane was? It was kind of hard for me to tell. You're an expert in these matters. Could you look at that tape and tell what size that plane was? Uh, it would have to be slowed down, and uh, you'd need more than one angle for it because you'd want to see how many engines on it, uh, the shape of the tail. Well, if it's, if it's possible, gang, could we, guys, could we go ahead and replay that tape right now? Do we have the tape ready? of the second plane impacting. We've got, we're going to put that tape on in just a second. Here we're about to roll it now. Uh, if you can, sir, I don't want you to, spe to speculate, but if you can give us an idea of what you think might be at play here, what kind of plane we're talking about, or at least what size, if we're talking about one that would hold, say, 100 people, one that would hold 300 people, uh, from the, what you see, you know, we can we'll have to back the tape up further than that, guys. Here we go. It's very hard to get a perspective on it. Uh... I don't know how far away we are at this, but that looks to me um, like it could be uh, certainly a passenger jet and uh, one of those aircraft that could hold 100 or more people. Uh, I caution you at this point uh, to wonder whether or not that airplane was occupied by more than just a pilot or a crew. Um, we don't necessarily know that there were any passengers aboard that airplane. Understood. Understood. Uh, Darren Kagan joining the conversation here, sir, but there's no indication that there would be any air traffic on purpose in the area of the World Trade Center at this time of day, or any time of day for that matter. Well, not directly into the World Trade Center. No, but you even be, close to it. You would be clearing the World Trade Center by a few miles. Normal operations. And when you're looking at the pictures that you see uh, with all this smoke and fire and all that, 
it's just absolutely unbelievable to think that a flight crew uh, that wouldn't ordinarily see the World Trade Center, wouldn't ordinarily be on course, would now not see this as a flaming beacon to avoid. Let me ask you this about the airspace. Given that it appears that two different airplanes have flown into the World Trade Center in 18 minutes, is it possible to shut down that airspace and keep another plane from doing something just like it? I don't think that this represents an accident. And so I don't think that we're talking about having to now keep other aircraft away. Uh, this picture that uh, CNN is broadcasting live is probably from a range of uh, a couple of miles away. And you can see that. No, certainly that, but if there was somebody who intentionally was trying to do the same thing again, is there a way to shut down the airspace to keep planes out? No, you can't shut down airspace. There's no gate, there's no fence in airspace. All you can do is broadcast that that airspace is closed. But if someone is intent on breaking through it, that happens with our military airspace all the time mm -hmm. off the coast. I want to bring, in a, bring up a couple points right now, if I may. We have just been told that President Bush has been informed of this incredible tragedy happening in New York. He did have an event scheduled at 9.30 this morning, which we were going to cover here. He has just canceled that event. We expect he will probably have some comments fairly soon, and we will bring those to you live the moment that uh, we understand he is available. But I, I'd like to ask you once again, uh, Ira, if I can get back to asking you about this particular crash. Is it possible that th those who are tracking planes either at LaGuardia through the, the radar, uh, can, can I give us some more information about exactly what happened here? Uh, if Were these planes, I guess, using beacons to come in or if they, there's some sort of identification of these planes as they approach the New York area? Yes, there should be if they were under air traffic control. You've got uh, one eyewitness telling you that the, the first aircraft flew from Westchester and flew down through Manhattan and directly into the World Trade Center, uh, presumably the North Tower. Uh, and now you've got, uh, you're showing the other aircraft uh, coming in, looks to me like it would be from the West, uh, into the other tower. Um, those planes could be, should be, normally would be under air traffic control, uh, but it is also entirely possible for aircraft to fly into, through, or over New York, or in this case into a building in New York, without being under the control. And we use that word advisedly. All that means is information is what air traffic control is, mm -hmm. um, and just operate and do whatever they want if they don't follow the rules of air traffic control. I refer to me, thank you very, very much for your insight. And the longer we talk, the, the less convinced many will become that this was an accident. We thank you very much for your insight. More information on that just ahead. Now we want to bring in Todd Harris. Todd, on the scene, saw what happened. Todd, are you with us? Yes, I had a perfect view and uh, the plane was coming in. I, I noticed it a second before it hit the building. It looked like it, it was moving slowly and it lined itself up to hit the building directly. Are you talking about the first plane or the, the second plane? The first plane. plane. And it, Todd, it, tell it, us exactly where you are, where you had this great view. I, I was on Highway 278, like a dead-on view of the, the side that it hit the building. All right, Todd, hang on. We're going to continue our conversation. Leon has something to, to get, jump in here with. Yes, I'm checking the wires even as we speak. The Associated Press is, is reporting right now that the FBI in Washington is investigating reports that these two plane crashes are the result of foul play. There is a report here by the Associated Press of a possible plane hijacking. We don't say, they don't say two, but they say a possible plane hijacking. Let's go to Kelly Arena, who's on the phone right now from Washington. Kelly? Hello, Kelly. Kelly Arena, are you there? Is All right, Kelly Arena. Okay, there's, there's Kelly. There's Kelly. You, Kelly, what have you there. learned? Okay, well, an FBI official has just told CNN that they are investigating, but they have not yet determined whether or not this was indeed a terrorist act. The official that I spoke to said that so far there has been no communication, no one claiming responsibility for uh, either of those crashes. Uh, there is an investigation underway. If there is anything to be said officially, it will come out of the, uh, the New York City field office of the FBI, which is uh, right now involved in that investigation to find out whether or not it was. But I have to tell you, I repeat, right now the FBI has not determined whether or not this is a terrorist act, although they are investigating. All right. Thank you very much. Kelly Arita, we appreciate that. Well, let's go. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring back in Todd Harris. Todd, are you still with us? We don't have Todd. 
Okay, once again, if you're just warning us, if you're just joining us, the, the breaking story that we're following out of New York City, uh, within the span of 18 minutes, two separate planes crashing into the World Trade Center. Um, the rescue operations underway, not clear. We're going to show you, this is the second plane after the first tower was already on fire. This happened just minutes ago. We'll let the pictures tell the story. You saw it live here on CNN as it happened. The plane crashed right into the side of the World Trade Center, causing a huge explosion. Now, as we speak, and we're showing you live pictures now, smoke and fire taking place in both towers of the World Trade Center. And it appeared that second plane that we actually did have on videotape on its approach toward that tower actually turned. And uh, I have to think, I'm not an expert in these right. things, so I don't know, but it would seem as though that move actually may have caused much more damage. Uh, let's this, go ahead these are incredible pictures, as you can see here. Let's keep the pictures up as we go ahead and talk to more eyewitnesses. Joe Trachtenberg joining us on the phone. Joe, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what your vantage point is and what you've seen so far? Um, well, we got. Uh, I heard on the radio that uh, one of the uh, towers was on fire, and we went to a high point in our building, which is on the 25th floor, and you had a clear view of the uh, both World Trade Centers, and the one tower was uh, smoking hard. And uh, there was another plane that was flying low, and we just looked at it, and before you know it, it just kamikaze, boom, right into the other tower, and mass explosion, windows flying. It was horrible. I'm still distraught looking were, at it. Were you close enough to see or get a general idea of what kind of plane that was that flew in the second time? Well, uh, I'm not an expert on planes, but it wasn't a, uh, didn't seem like a big passenger jet. It was a smaller type plane because it made some pretty radical turn and you know they were flying low and you're not used to see big planes flying over Manhattan because I don't think you're allowed to but uh, it was pretty tough. And explain to me again what your vantage point is, where you are in the city looking at this. Um, we're in uh, Chelsea, it's uh, like uh, 25th Street and 7th Avenue and uh, there's, it's clear looking all the way downtown and you can see the buildings, you know, the whole downtown because it's a clear day and it's, it's a disaster. And once again, describe for us what you saw as that plane went to the second building. Uh, that plane just flew straight into the second building on the downtown side, it appeared. It was just a huge explosion, and smoke just immediately, and fire started immediately uh, coming from the second tower as it, as it hit, and there was glass flying everywhere. All right, looks like we have a little bit of audio problem with that, so I'm going to say thanks to Joe Trachtenberg for uh, talking to us and telling us what he saw. We were watching it right here, live on CNN, as that plane went in. He had a closer vantage point and could see, as you, as you heard Leon, he was saying, he doesn't think it was a big jet, uh, but a smaller plane, yeah. closer up from where he could see it. Well, we do have a, a tape of a, a recounting it by another witness, another eyewitness. We're going to go to some tape that we're getting for our, our affiliate WABC in New York, where they interviewed an eyewitness who saw the second crash as it happened. Well, the, um, I say the hole takes about, looks like six, seven floors were taken out, and there's more oh, explosions there's, oh, right now. Hold on, people are running. Wait, hold, so, hold on. on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. The building's that... exploding right now. you got people running up the street. Okay. Hold on, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, just uh, put, put Winston on pause there for just a moment. Okay, while the he... whole building just exploded some more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the street. Uh, am I still connected? Winston, this would support probably what Libby and you both said, that perhaps the fuselage was in the building that would cause a second explosion such as that. Well, that's what just happened then. That would, that certainly... Yeah, people are running up. Like, um, I, we are getting word that perhaps... Okay, hold on. The, the people here are, everybody's panicking. Keep in mind that the first plane hit about 8.48 a.m., so there had to already be a number of people at work inside the World Trade Center. We're going to go right now bring in Rose Arce, one of our producers here at CNN. She's with us on the phone and has with her a number of people who have escaped the building. Rose. Yes, there's a huge crowd. I'd say about hundreds of people on the streets that come from south to north. I've been really thousands of people that have been running from inside these buildings. You know, it's a very heavily trafficked area in downtown the World Trade Center. Many of them were inside the building when they felt the explosion. And they say there was just pandemonium. There was no warning, no alarms, no anything. Everyone just raced from their desks, ran downstairs, and now there's a steady stream of folks running away from the building. Some people saying that they're fearing there'll be another explosion. And when they saw the second plane, convinced that this was dangerous, there's, there's just an absolute flood of folks escaping downtown Manhattan right now. 
And Rose, do you have anybody with you that could um, talk about being inside the World Trade Center when this happened? Right now, honestly, there are scores of people that are literally running by me. There's debris on the, on the base of the building that has continued to fall. As, you know, even as, as far as a block away from the building, and what's happened is that everyone has, has, seems to have figured out that there's ongoing danger, and there's just a stream of folks running as quickly as they can uptown away from, the, from this. Understandably. What about rescue efforts? I would imagine there's still a number of people inside those buildings. Well, right now what you see is there's, there's uh, trucks trying to get through, and, and people have actually jumped from the crowd and are trying to help direct traffic to try to get emergency vehicles there. There is no traffic going in the other direction, but because of the flow of people, it looks like some emergency vehicles are actually having trouble getting to mm. the scene. And from where you're standing, is there any kind of command center, any place that people are being directed toward? Right now, what there is is there's a crush of, of emergency vehicles and rescue vehicles, but they don't seem to be quite organized in any direction. Um, there's fire department vehicles on the one side where you see the smoke coming out of the building. On the other hand, you see police groups of police officers trying to organize the crowd and in more orderly fashion. I think there's, there seems to be some fear on their part that such a huge crowd of people might injure each other on the way, on the way out. All right, Rose Arce on the ground there near the World Trade Center. We continue our coverage live with the live pictures as we go. And we're just now getting word again from the Associated Press now saying that the crash of these two aircraft into the towers of the World Trade Center in New York appear to be an act of terrorism. This they are quoting a U.S. official. They did not say which department of this, uh, or this U.S. official was speaking from or the authority this, uh, this official was uh, actually carrying at this particular point, but they're saying that a U.S. official is now saying to the Associated Press, in his official, well, he's, he is saying at least, that these two aircraft crashes we've seen into each of the towers of the World Trade Center are the act of terrorism. We're just getting word now that President Bush is going to be coming out and he's going to have comments uh, momentarily. We understand we're keeping an eye on the picture from Sarasota. He's going to be returning to Washington almost immediately, we understand. Darren? And in fact, as you mentioned, President Bush is in Florida today. We're supposed to have an education event just minutes from now. That has been canceled. Our Major Garrett is traveling with the President. Major, maybe you can tell us a little bit more on the President's immediate plans. Good morning, Darren. Uh, President Bush, uh, as you said, will make a statement here at Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota on the catastrophe at the Twin Towers in New York. Following that statement, the President will board Air Force One and return immediately to Washington. We are told by White House officials traveling with the President in Sarasota that he was notified either shortly before 9 a.m. or just shortly after. We don't have an exact moment of the notification of the president we believe his chief of staff andrew card told him of the uh, events in new york city the president has been monitoring them as best as he can he was at one moment this morning sitting reading a book to some of the elementary school children here as scheduled reporters asked him if he was aware of the situation in new york he nodded a bit gravely and said he would have something to say about that shortly we are expecting that statement any moment now I can tell you here in Sarasota with those traveling with the president, they are trying to sift through all of the amazing and terrifying uh, both pictures and details as they can uh, uh, get them from New York City, but no confirmation here from White House officials about what this in fact is, whether it's accident or terrorism. They are trying to gather information as best they can, give it to the president, and trying to keep uh, things on a very calm and even keel if possible. And on that note, Major, it sounds like that exchange of questions with the president came at what would be a sensitive time if he was sitting in front of a bunch of school children and not wanting to scare the children. Well, precisely. And uh, the, the president uh, has a way of uh, letting reporters know that it's either an appropriate time or an inappropriate time to take questions. He does that in many different environments, many different situations. Clearly this morning with the, with the crowd of children, he wanted to keep an even keel, keep the situation under control as best as possible. He just nodded and said, I'm, uh, we'll talk about this later. Right. So once again, we do expect to hear from the president soon a time frame on that. Uh, within the next 10 minutes or so, again, things are very much in flux, things are a bit confused. The event here, uh, which was scheduled to talk about education reform, talk about the importance of reading, that has been scrubbed, and the president is trying to uh, gather whatever information, all the information he can from various White House sources make a statement and then uh, get aboard Air Force One, get back to Washington just as soon as he can. Major Garrett traveling with the president in Sarasota, Florida. Major, thank you very much. And of course, as soon as the president begins to speak, you'll see those comments live here on CNN. Leon. I want to uh, just inform you that uh, we've just gotten word, uh, according to Reuters News Service, uh, trading on this markets in New York have been postponed indefinitely. And uh, 
we will try to keep an eye on that, but can't expect that to happen, get underway anytime soon. But, but we just heard our Major Garrett mention moments ago this investigation. We're just now getting reports here. The Associated Press saying that U.S. officials are saying this is an act of terrorism. Let's go now to our David Enzor, who's on the phone right now, and give us some more information on what may be at stake there. David. Well, Leon, I, I can just tell you uh, that uh, U.S. officials are also telling me uh, that uh, this is clearly not an accident in their view, and they do believe that terrorism is at the root of this. Uh, they believe this is a terrorist act. Uh, however, uh, they have very little other information. Obviously, uh, law enforcement agencies will be taking the lead on this, trying to find out who these, uh, uh, who was flying the planes, whether they had in fact been uh, 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 turned away from their regular flights, and so on. So, very little information. David, we're gonna, here, David, we're going to cut you off. President Bush is speaking. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. The motion of President Bush there speaking in Sarasota, Florida, cutting short his stop there, saying that uh, an apparent terrorist attack has occurred on U.S. soil. They're mentioning the two planes that have crashed into the World Trade Center this morning. It says a full-scale investigation is underway to hunt down those responsible for this, saying terrorism will not stand. And uh, Leon, on the heels of the president's remarks, CNN has learned that at least one of the planes involved in this hit on the World Trade Center was an American Airlines 767, a Boeing aircraft that took off from Boston. What happened to that airplane as it took off from Boston and how it ended up at the World Trade Center, our details will have to fill in as we go. But uh, let's go ahead and bring in our David Ensor. David, um, you were saying before uh, we interrupted you for the president's remarks. Well, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the amount of detail that the officials who are tracking this have is pretty sketchy at this point. But uh, I was just saying that officials are calling this a, an act of terrorism. They're saying that's clearly what it is, clearly not an accident. Uh, and and uh, law enforcement agencies, the FBI and others, will be taking the lead on this, officials say. And clearly, obviously, they will first try to uh, ascertain who did this. Uh, what nationality are they? What's, what's behind this? That's really, really all I can say. There, there are um, uh, several places around the government. There are uh, groups of officials gathering and setting up crisis centers to try and deal with the flow of information on this, which, as you can imagine, uh, is going to be considerable as the day progresses. And so far, as far as we know, no one has been taken responsibility for this. Uh, there have been no claims of responsibility, and U.S. intelligence officials say they had uh, no warning of anything like this uh, coming along. All right, David Ensor, thank you for joining us on the phone. Once again, you can see that information at the bottom of your screen. Two different planes have flown into the World Trade Center within the last hour. One plane was an American Airlines Boeing 767 from Boston in terms of how many people were on board that plane and um, if it was forcibly taken from Boston into New York, we still have yet to learn. Well, we're joined now on the telephone by the former uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency Director James Lee Witt. Uh, Director Witt, uh, you're watching these pictures with us this morning. Your, your comments. Well, it's just horrible. Um, there's no doubt. Uh, I, I did see the one plane flying into the building. It's just unbelievable, something like this. But, you know, we've been... Uh, you know, for several years now, we've been working on terrorist type events, and you know, and this is um, uh, apparently one of those events. I do not know yet, but apparently it could be. And, and right now, I know I, f I really feel for those families. And and uh, but Richie and uh, the New York Emergency Management, the state of New York, and um, 
and I know they're very busy right now in the law in the FBI and law enforcement. But this is one of those crisis management as uh, well as a consequence management situation that they're going to have to be dealing with. You know, the, the first thing that's calls to mind to many of us who have been here to cover these events was the World Trade Center bombing back in uh, back in '96 when that bombing occurred. Yes. And you were director of FEMA at that particular time. Since then, what uh, has is there been a plan put in place to? for something like this, to recover from this, or to actually to, to go through the exercises necessary to get people out and, and, and to recover from it? Well, they have a very good plan in place and uh, for uh, even events, uh, you know, not as this, I don't think, air, I don't know if they put a plan in place for airline crashing into it, but I know they take every scenario they can think of and try to deal with uh, a plan that will help them respond to, in the most effective way. And, uh, you know, we even practice uh, airplanes flying into igloos, you know, in, uh, at, at some of the arsenals uh, around the United States. So you try to practice for everything you can think of and hope for the best and that you can be able to respond and, and hope none of this happens. But did, did, well, on that note, then, did you, run, how many, did you run any kinds of tests at all or, or any kinds of, I don't know, theoretical tests or computer tests or anything on something like this? Uh, I'm not. We didn't. I'm not sure if New York, uh, New York City did. Uh, I'm sure they did. Uh, but uh, you know, you can't. Uh, you know, you. How can you stop something like this without having an anti-aircraft gun sitting on top of buildings? You know. Yeah. You yeah. just can't. You just. You can prepare the best you can be, and that's all you can do. And but uh, I'm sure that they've got everything in place and doing. Uh, they always do an excellent job up there in New York. Director Witt, Director James Lee Witt, uh, former director of FEMA, we thank you very much for your time this morning. We'll be talking with you later on. Darren. As we continue our coverage, our Aaron Brown uh, in New York City joining us now. Aaron, we can see over your uh, left shoulder there the, the building still smoldering of the World Trade Center. Well, it is uh, a grotesque sight to look at from about 30 blocks away from where we are. For those of you just uh, joining us, let's just briefly recap what we know. About an hour ago, about uh, 8.45 Eastern Time, one plane crashed into uh, the tower, the World Trade Center tower on the right, the first of those towers that you can see behind me. Uh, and then about a half hour later, uh, a second plane crashed into uh, the tower number two. That's the one to the left, uh, where the darker smoke is billowing out right now. Um, we have reports, CNN has been told that one of the planes was an American Airlines 767 that had been hijacked from Boston. Uh, we don't know if that was the first or the second plane that hit the tower, but we do, we do know uh, that, uh, that it was a 767 American Airlines jet, at least that's what CNN has been told by sources so far this morning. We also have reports of, uh, of a thousand injuries that is unconfirmed, and we always remind you in moments like these that as these initial reports come in, it is very early. I can tell you have driving in, it is extraordinarily chaotic on the west side of New York. Uh, it is the kind of situation where numbers change, where situations change, but this is the information we have now, that there are at least a thousand injuries, and we're working on that, as you can see, the smoke billowing out of the Trade Center. Um, we, in Sarasota, uh, Florida now, Major Garrett joins us. Major, what are you being told? Hello. President Bush has notified and talked, rather, to Vice President Cheney. He has talked to the FBI Director Robert Mueller, and he has also spoken with the Governor of New York, Governor Pataki, about this catastrophe. The President will convene a national security meeting upon his arrival back at Washington. Those are the four pieces of information we have gathered here in the moment since I just spoke to you on the telephone. The President, as we just saw a few moments ago, identifying this as an apparent act of terrorism against the United States, said there will be a full investigation. The entire apparatus of the United States government, FBI, national security, CIA, the vice president, who you may remember, was placed in charge of a domestic terrorism study group within the White House to monitor and develop plans to deal with a catastrophe of just this kind. All those parts of the government have been mobilized. The president, the president is uh, heading back to Washington very soon. Here is what the president said about this catastrophe of the Twin Towers in New York just a few moments ago here at the Sarasota Elementary School. Uh, Major, it's Aaron. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed 
into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. The president was first notified about the situation in New York by National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. Then the second notification updating him with more details on the situation came from his chief of staff, Andrew Card, who's traveling with the president here in Sarasota. The day was supposed to talk about education reform, but the president is scrubbing all of those plans, marshalling all the resources of the federal government, talking with his aides as he can, and preparing to fly back to Washington to again, as we said, convene a National Security Council meeting. Back to you. Uh, Major, before you get away, and I apologize if you, if I'm asking you to repeat something, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Uh, do we know exactly where the president was, when he was told? He was just arriving here in Sarasota at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He had taken an early morning jog this morning in Sarasota, had just arrived here with a presidential motorcade. Then the spectacular, horrific pictures began appearing on television sets here at the elementary school. The president received a telephone call from Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor. Then he received an update from his chief of staff, Andrew Card, traveling with him. Then it was made clear to the press traveling with the president he would make a statement. Shortly before that statement, he was actually sitting down with some children here at the elementary school, reading them a book. Reporters asked him if he knew about the situation of the Twin Towers. He nodded and said he would talk about it momentarily. In fact, he did. We just heard the president's statement declaring Major, this an apparent act of terrorism. Yes, Aaron. Let me interrupt you here. Senator Ted Kennedy is, uh, Senator Kennedy is speaking in Washington. As again, one of the planes was hijacked from Boston. Uh, perhaps we can hear the senator now. This morning, uh, we underline the point that it is uh, postponed. We are not going to see the business of America uh, deferred because of terrorism, uh, whether it's in education or in any area of uh, public uh, policy. You're looking forward to hearing uh, from the, uh, the First Lady <coughs> on a subject matter which is of central concern to uh, all families in this uh, country. And because of her experience and her leadership, uh, this committee and the Congress and the American people would have benefited greatly uh, from her comments. And we will look forward to an early... Senator Ted Kennedy in Washington. Chris Plant, a CNN producer, is at the Pentagon where there is a significant fire. Chris, you're on the phone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Tell me what you know. Well, uh, arriving at the Pentagon a short time ago, uh, there was a uh, huge plume of smoke which continues to rise from the west side of the Pentagon over in the area where there is a uh, helicopter landing zone. It's along Route 27 if you're looking at maps of the area. The building is currently being evacuated and uh, police and emergency units are of course responding from uh, all around the building. Uh, and from the local Arlington County Fire Department. The plume of smoke is, uh, is enormous. It's a couple of hundred yards across at its base. It is billowing into the sky hundreds of yards. It's impossible for me to say from this side of the building whether the building itself is uh, on fire or up in flames or exactly what caused this. I did not hear an explosion, uh, but there is certainly a very, very significant fire in this enormous office building on the west front. Uh, the building is being evacuated. The Defense Pro Protective Service officers, the police force for the Pentagon, are uh, on a very tight string right now. As I arrived, okay. I was Chris, held at gunpoint. Chris, Chris yes. let, me, let me interrupt you for a second. Just hang on. Don't go anywhere. We're getting reports now that uh, the White House is being evacuated as well. We don't know precisely what has uh, what caused that decision to be made. Uh, 
whether that is precautionary, whether something has happened at the White House. Again, the president is in Florida this morning, so the president is not in any danger. But the White House, of course, is fully operational, whether the president is there or not. And we have reports that the White House is being evacuated. Uh, getting back to Chris in a moment, we also have reports now from uh, Chris Plant on the scene that the Pentagon is being evacuated as well. All of this coming on the heels of a large fire at the Pentagon, and we can't tell you at this moment whether that fire is inside the Pentagon building itself or on the ground to the Pentagon. And these two planes that you can see behind us that hit the World Trade Center, uh, that's Washington, the old executive office building, I believe, and you can see the plume of smoke behind it, which we will assume until we're told otherwise that that's the fire at the Pentagon. I believe that's correct. Uh, as you look now at Washington. So we've got uh, a major fire at the Pentagon and the Pentagon being evacuated, the White House being evacuated, and we don't know precisely the circumstances there, what caused that decision. And we have these two enormous uh, explosions at the World Trade Center here in New York where two planes slammed into the buildings. We are also getting reports now that there is a fire on the mall in Washington, that part of the Capitol that runs uh, essentially from the Capitol to the White House in kind of a straight line going uh, up Washington, D.C., and we have reports of a fire there. Uh, this, what you're looking at now is Washington, at least if I can see the monitor in front of me. It's a little tricky from where we are, but that looks to me like the old executive office building, and then in back of it you see the large plume of smoke. Here in New York, uh, sirens everywhere, people out on the streets staring at this uh, grotesque scene of the World Trade Center buildings. It was in February of 93, if memory serves me correctly, that there was an attack, a terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. Bomb exploded in the garage of the Trade Center on that day in February of 93. Now here we are in the year 2001 and w what appears to be deliberate attacks on the World Trade Center and then we have these two reports out of Washington, the fire at the Pentagon. Chris Plan is still uh, on the phone, I do believe. Um, and right, we'll get to hit him in a second. Greta Van Susteren is at National Airport in Washington. Greta, what are you hearing? Uh, I just got off my plane. I was headed to New York. Planes were stalled. I'm at National Airport on the parking lot. I heard a huge noise. I looked over in the direction of the Pentagon. There's a huge plume of smoke coming from that area. I can't verify it's the Pentagon because there are these buildings in the way. You see particles coming down in the air, some sort of white particles. I can't tell what that is. I'd heard a noise slightly before I'd seen the smoke. I don't know if it's an airplane or if it's a bomb, but it was certainly something. And obviously there's a terrific fire going on. Um, the skies are clear here except for the tremendous amount of smoke that's coming from there. Lots of sirens from all different directions and, of course, a lot of uncertainty here at National Airport. Uh, Greta, thank you. Uh, I want to just again recap as we pick up small pieces of information along the way. Associated Press is reporting that a plane, it was a plane that crashed at the Pentagon and the Pentagon is being evacuated. There is a large fire there and that is the smoke you see in the shot that you are looking at now. Whether that fire is in the building itself or outside we have not yet confirmed. There is a fire on the mall in Washington. The, ca the cause of the fire on the mall in Washington, we cannot yet tell you. We can tell you that the White House has been evacuated, and we can tell you that two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. All of this began uh, just a little more than an hour ago at about 8.45 Eastern Time. Chris Plant, tell me what you've learned since we last talked. Well, in speaking to people uh, here at, uh, at the Pentagon, as they're being evacuated, from the building, I am told by several people that there was, in fact, an explosion. I was told by one uh, witness, uh, an Air Force enlisted, uh, senior enlisted man, that he was outside when it occurred. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter landing zone is. Excuse me. <clears throat> and that he then saw a fireball uh, go into the sky. Uh, I'm attempting to make my way around to that side of the building in my car right now uh, to see if I can get uh, a better uh, visual perspective on the scene on that side of the building. But I can tell you that security has certainly clamped down. The U.S. Park Police and other federal law enforcement uh, department has arrived in force on the scene. 
There's a park police helicopter overhead. Uh, every car that arrives at the gate uh, where I was located was being stopped by officers at gunpoint. Everyone is being forced out of their vehicles as they arrive at the Pentagon. It's a very tense situation, obviously, uh, but initial reports from witnesses indicate that uh, there was, in fact, a helicopter circling the building. Uh, contrary to uh, what the AP reported, according to the witnesses I've spoken to anyway, uh, and that this helicopter disappeared behind the building and that there was then an explosion. Uh, that's about all I have from here. Okay, l let's do this, Chris. Why don't you continue reporting and we'll pass along a couple of other things that we're picking up along the way. Uh, trading at the New York Stock Exchange. The Stock Exchange, as many of you probably know, but some of you don't, is in that part of lower Manhattan, not quite far as far down as the Trade Center, but it is in that part of lower Manhattan, and trading has been suspended there. Bridges and tunnels coming into New York have been closed. Uh, that will create a whole different set of problems. We are also being told that the FAA has suspended takeoffs and landings, and I want to make sure I get this right, guys, that in all uh, at all airports around the country. Uh, so uh, air travel in this country has come to a halt this morning as clearly uh, people are trying, people in government, people, police forces, fire departments are trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Uh, there are several now incidents that look for all that we can tell to be a major terrorist attack here in the United States. So all airports all across the country are closed. All bridges and tunnels coming into Manhattan are closed. The Pentagon has been evacuated or is being evacuated. The White House is being evacuated. The president who is in Sarasota today uh, to make a speech on education has spoken briefly to cameras and is, uh, will shortly make his way back to Washington. They are checking out uh, Air Force One now, let's go uh, to Atlanta. Chad Myers can talk to us a bit about the air traffic problems. Chad, are you there? Aaron, yes. Um, all of the airports across the country have been shut down. We started with Zone New York, which includes Islip, Newark, JFK, LaGuardia, all the way down to Philadelphia, and then IAH, Houston, and then San Francisco, and then LA. They were just falling like a deck of cards, and then all of a sudden the FAH just said, we're shutting down everything. All flights have been canceled and for another seven hours, which is about five o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll reignite there. We'll take a look what's going on after that. The probability of extension, as they call that, is high, which means even after 5 o'clock, the airports may still be shut down. We'll keep watching it for you here from Atlanta. Um, Chad, just, uh, and if you don't know, just say you don't know. Do you, can, can you recall a situation where every airport in the country had been shut down? Absolutely not, except in wartime, of course, uh, Aaron, and obviously this is uh, not that. But uh, with all the airports, that, as they were going down from west to east, we could see them. And then we could eventually see from New York. And then they canceled Boston as we got the report that the first flight, or one of the possible hijack flights, did come out of Boston. And then it just started going down from there. But never, ever before, have we ever seen all of the airports shut down like this, not this quickly. Chad, thank you. Stay on this for a while. We'll get back to you. We know that many people are... Uh, just joining us. We want to get everyone on the same page before we move on. So one more time, let's go through the sequence of events. At about 8.45 Eastern Time, a plane crashed into uh, the foremost of those towers that are the World, the world Trade Center. Uh, that's uh, Air Force One you see in Florida, the president on board. Uh, obviously extraordinary security around the plane before the president got on and the president is heading back to Washington. A short time ago the president made a statement. He said terrorism against our nation will not stand. The government will hunt down those responsible. Mr. Bush said today we've had a national tragedy. Two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center, an apparent terrorist attack on the country. And we also have a report now that the, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon and we have a large fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon is being evacuated as we speak now. The White House has been evacuated as well. CNN's John King joins us on the phone. John.
Aaron, I'm standing in Lafayette Park directly across from the White House, perhaps about 200 yards from the White House residence itself. The Secret Service has pushed most people all the way back to the other side of the park, trying to avoid having that done to me at the moment. Just moments ago, they started slowly evacuating the White House about 30 minutes ago, and then in the last five minutes, people have come running out of the White House and the old executive office building, the build, which is the office building right directly across from the White House. About 10 minutes ago, there was a white jet circling overhead. Now, you generally don't see planes in the area over the White House. That is restricted airspace. No reason to believe that this jet was there for any nefarious purposes, but the Secret Service was very concerned, pointing up at the jet in the sky. It is out of sight now, best we can tell, but they've evacuated the entire White House staff and the old executive office, as well as some townhouses that are government offices. Many of our viewers might know Blair House, where other international leaders stay when they are in Washington. That block of townhouses has been evacuated as well, and they are pushing us now back toward 8th Street, which is the next main street to the north from Pennsylvania Avenue across from the White House. Okay, John, hang on one second. We're also getting reports at the Capitol, the Treasury Building also being evacuated. John, is this evacuation from the White House, was it orderly? Did it seem panicky? How would you characterize it? It started off as orderly, much like we get when there are occasional bomb scares near the White House. But then, again, in the last 10 minutes or so, the people who came out the last several hundred I saw leaving the grounds were told and ordered by the Secret Service to run. They were running through the gates. These are, of course, professionals in business suits. I'm also told that prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, that the vice president and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they have stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke to an administration official shortly after the president delivered his statement. who said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption, this official said, was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connections with Osama bin Laden. The administration recently released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. targets. Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, <coughs> excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I, I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that, but that's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the World Trade Center. And you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now. And then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners. A second plane drove in too, and you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape, and there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least, and this is the first time I've seen that tape, come through the back side of the tower, I guess that would be the south side of the tower, and, and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side. Um, again, that was about a half hour after the first attack, which was at about 8.45. Look, w you want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed apparently as part of whatever this operation has been. And uh, is, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion here at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor, uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, uh, coming past their window. The Pentagon has been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard uh, as uh, emergency teams try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke billowing from the scene. 
Uh, there was a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon, the, the west front, which uh, faces sort of toward Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, it's a uh, corridor where a lot of Army offices are located. Wow. And some Jamie, people were... Jamie, I need you to stop for a second. There has just been a huge explosion. We can see uh, a billowing smoke rising. And I can't, I'll, I'll tell you that I can't see that second tower, but y there was a cascade of sparks and fire. And now this, it looks almost like a mushroom cloud explosion, this huge billowing smoke in the second tower. This was the second of the two towers hit. And I, you know, I cannot see behind that smoke, obviously, as you can either. The first tower in front has not changed. And we see this extraordinarily and frightening scene behind us of this second tower now just encased in smoke. What is behind it? I, I cannot tell you, but just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. Again, this is going on now in two cities. We have a report that uh, there is a fire at the State Department as well, and that is being evacuated. So we've got fires at the Pentagon evacuated, the State Department evacuated, the White House evacuated on the basis of what the Secret Service describes as a as a credible terrorist threat. We have two explosions, two planes hitting the World Trade Center here in New York. And what this second explosion was that took place about a part of the south, that would be the South Tower has apparently collapsed. We don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it or whether something else has happened there. We'll work on that. Our Washington bureau chief, Frank Cessno, is on the phone. Frank, what are you hearing? Aaron, I just drove past the Pentagon across the 14th Street Bridge, which is now choked with traffic. We're beginning to hear uh, emergency sirens and rescue personnel uh, uh, fanning out across Washington. There is a gigantic black billowing cloud of smoke that, has, that is rising over the Pentagon. You heard Jamie McIntyre a moment ago describe where that uh, was coming from. I can also tell you that local Radio, in addition to talking about evacuations, as we've heard at the Pentagon, and the White House is reporting that the what? Capitol building has been evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you, as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government and as John King was explaining, Frank, the White House Frank, it's Aaron. I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of... ...really taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you, as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government and as John King was explaining, Frank, the White House Frank, it's Aaron. I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of...